Oh, my dear. Hello, can everybody hear me? I see two people on so far. Give me a second here. Go ahead and log in your hellos, your good evenings as I put my head. Sorry about that. All right. Oh, Kendra. Hi, Kendra. Uh, so having issues, Tanika, you can't hear me? Hi, Howard. How are you guys? Welcome, welcome. We have a guest tonight. So we're trying to get a couple technical difficulties. Okay, I think we're good. All right, we might be good. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Hello, my dear friend Kendra. We have to catch up. <laughs> Hi, good to hear you're doing well. Good to be here. Awesome, thank you. Hi, Roy. <laughs> I think I only need one of these things. How are you, Roy? <laughs> you guys are awesome. Let's hang out for a little bit. Um, or, or our esteemed guest worked really hard to get here to this evening. So we're really excited that she was able to make it. So take a couple of deep breaths. Well, we're gonna get everybody in here <laughs> and get it going here. How's the weekend been? Hi, Gigi's Goat Farm. Good night. Guys, we need rain. Who has rain? We've not had rain for a long time. We desperately need rain. So I'm gonna go outside and do the rain dance here in a little bit, but we need rain. <laughs> but anywhere else getting rain? I think I heard like St. Andrew got some a little bit. We got some rain in Florida. Thank you, Kendra. You need to bottle it up and send it down for us. We could use some down here in Jamaica. <laughs> can you guys hear the dogs? I'm hoping you can't. Raining every morning here in North Texas. Oh, that's right. You're on, in, on vacation in North Texas, Howard. How's that going? We need some of that rain, too. So we're going to get rain from Texas and rain from Florida and bottle it and send it to Jamaica. How about that? Yes, dry and dusty. Sorry. Sorry, Gigi. <laughs> it's dry here. We have major cracks in the ground. And it's, you have to be careful going out to the pasture because you do the little wobble. <laughs> and fall into a hole, so that's never good. So. Oh, you hear the dogs clearly. Oops, I was hoping the headset would kind of minimize that. Hopefully they'll calm down a little bit. So it just depends on what's going on. Hopefully nobody comes by and riles them up. So hopefully we'll be good this evening. All right, we're gonna give everybody a couple more minutes. Hi, Natty, welcome. Good night, surprise, surprise, guys. Guys, so so used to seeing Ray. Not Ray tonight. <laughs> oh, good. Good to hear that the dogs are not a problem at all. We also have puppies, so you might hear them because they think they're big and bad, and they're like this big. <laughs> so you might hear them also in the background a little bit. They're actually so cute. But I'm going to give everybody a little bit more time to come in. And I did hear thunder rolling earlier today. So I'm keep. I should say earlier this evening, probably about four or five o'clock ish. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that means the rain is coming pretty soon thereafter. So, all right, we're gonna give it a couple more minutes. My thought. It's warm, it's quite warm in Jamaica. Hopefully I don't sweat too much tonight, so, <laughs> all right. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we welcome everybody. We are always, always happy to see our iGoat family. You guys are always so faithful to come and hang out with us. And we love that just as much as we're sharing information, you guys are also willing to share information. So it's been a long time coming, 
but we now have a guest. And we've had her before, so she's not so anybody new to us, All right? So we're so excited to have Dr. Denny, Dr. Tanika Denny. Hi, Doc. I call her Dr. D. I call her T. I call her all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Denny. How are you? Hi, Trudy. Hi. Hi, good family. How are you doing? We are doing great, and we thank you very much for breaking your neck to come and be here with us. <laughs> Right, I was I was on daughterly duties today, so I oh. had my mother. Okay, and all right. I started time and I rushed back because I, I hate being late for things. Once I, I, I get a commitment for a time, mm -hmm. I, I try to stick to it. But you know what? Life happens, so we got to work with life. <laughs> we we have to work with life. I had to run to Kingston to the dentist and come back. I got up this morning. Milk, did all that kind of stuff, then ran to Kingston to the dentist and came back. <laughs> so, I was driving through Junction or you drove the highway? Junction. Hello. Because I'm, I'm in, I'm at the farm. I'm not, I'm not right. in Jacksonville. So, yeah, it's closer this way. Right. It's closer this way. Sense. All right. Good. So, guys, we're going to get started and I'm going to let Dr. Denny, here's where I want to start, Dr. Denny. Tell us a little bit about your past and then bring us to your present. And there's a reason why I did this, guys, and you're going to hear why in a second. Go ahead, Dr. Denny. <laughs> All right. So I returned, well, I, I got my PhD in 2008 mm -hmm. in poultry nutrition. And when I came back, you know, I, I was just eager to contribute to nation development. So the first place I went to was the College of Agriculture Science and Education, where I was a research and outreach coordinator. Mm -hmm. to the young students, helped them go on to win the JPS semester competition. Okay. And then from there, um, I, I realized that sometimes it's it's best not to go back to your alma mater, especially when you're very young. Uh-huh. That would be hard. Yeah, and, and probably I'm probably a little arrogant too because um, you know youth youth tend to think of you know we know everything. So that's true. That's yeah. true. We learn. We we yeah. grow up and learn. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so from there, I went to Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. Bodo's Resource Station, to be specific. Mm -hmm. First, the Chief Livestock. Officer, and then I moved up to the senior research director. Okay. And while there, I perfected the urea molasses block. So Cardi had a, a urea molasses block technique that involved heating the molasses and the ingredients over a fire. Okay. And <clears throat> I don't know about anybody else, but you know, I, I thought that it was it, it could be a little bit more user friendly. Mm -hmm. So when I did my research, I discovered there's actually another technique that is in the cold press method. Okay. I perfected it, did experiments with cold press. You're into a hard lesson about the use of urea. Okay. The limited, particularly if the, the block is too soft. Mm. Um, animal died on it. It was perhaps one of the most painful experiences ever for wow. researcher. And from there, we did another experiment. Um, so once we perfected the block, we I wrote up brochures, explained to farmers how they could do it. And then I did corn poppy silage project. So you know, set up the plots, that type okay. of thing could improve on the silage. That was that was rather interesting too. And um then while I was there, I was in charge of, of course, the Animal Nutrition Laboratory. Mm -hmm. but I also became the National Coordinator of Animal Genetic Resources. I sat on the committee and I was responsible for submitting a report, Jamaica's report, to the FAO for Animal okay. Genetic Resources. Mm -hmm. and that is where I met up with Dr. Motto, learned about artificial okay. insemination. Yes. You know, really got into the whole process. And then after that, the, there was the small ruminant project, the CFC project. You know, I okay. was in charge of the, the budgeting, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after four and a half years, I thought that I wasn't, I felt as if I wasn't really contributing much to national development because of budgetary constraints. Mm -hmm. it, it got to a point where a lot of the research work that we were doing, 
um, because we didn't have funding to do traveling to disseminate information to the farmers. I felt that there was something more that I could be doing. And okay. I, of course, was eternally grateful for all of the information that I gathered and uh -huh. at Google's. Because, you know, I, I met, for example, Cicero Lalu, where he came, introduced some improved forages and even did heat increment exper experiments where we collected data for him and published it in the Tropical Agricultural Journal. Okay. So all of that information acted as a scaffold for when I went to Jamaica Broilers. Ah, oh, okay. All right, very good. Yeah. So <laughs> the first thing I, I improved was the, the goat supplement, and then from mm -hmm. there, the dairy ration, beef ration, mm -hmm. And, you know, I was just really excited. I developed a lamb ration while I was there. It was mostly for the export market. Developed yeah. a ration for... So ration. this is like the third time you've been on, right? Because I remember one time you came on to talk yes. about the ration and we did the maintenance ration. And the maintenance, right. So that was when I was I was introducing the maintenance ration to, to the rest of Jamaica. Yes. Right. So always... I want it like it cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> My knowledge is still on the market. I'm not sure. Okay. I have to check on that. I have to check on that. Yes. <laughs> so we can look into that. But yeah, so we, we did the rabbit ration. And um, of course, you know, I do poultry, pigs, horses. Mm -hmm. you name it. I've done it. I've even done a, a duck formula. Wow. So you've yeah. done it all. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I used to manage 80 active feed formulas plus premixes in addition to negotiating for ingredients and inventory management for the ingredients. So oh, okay. Your hands are full. Yeah, my There's hands are full. a lot are. going on. Yeah. But um, there, there comes a time when the universe sends you a message mm -hmm. and it's time to reevaluate. Mm -hmm. My message came in the form of the death of my father. Ooh. And it, it happened at a very stressful time. You know, we had the feed crisis going on. Sorry to hear. And I, I just, yeah, I just decided that it was time to set back, step back, reassess where I was going. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a farmer. Okay. You know, I was a researcher. I was a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. No, it was time to actually fulfill my lifelong dream of being a farmer. And so you are no longer with... Jamaica Broilers, no longer. Yeah, no, okay. Right. Of, okay. April 30th, that was my okay. last week with Jamaica mm -hmm. Broilers. Mm -hmm. And as with my previous jobs, the information that I've garnered at Jamaica Broilers acts as a platform to launch into something new. So you never really start over. No. You start from experience and you build upon that. You build so, on that. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's exactly where I am. So now that I'm on the other side of the fence, I actually have a very unique point of view. I don't know if many people can actually say that mm -hmm. because I've been with government, I've been with private sector and all the practicality associated with private sector. And now I am a farmer and I'm also providing services to other farmers. Very nice. So, one of the things that this unique point of view has allowed me um, is you're never too old or too learned to actually learn from somebody else. Absolutely. So that is critical. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that is how I had improved a lot of the formulations while mm -hmm. I was sat at the chair of nutritionists at mm -hmm. Jamaica Broilers. It was a feedback from farmers like you, for example. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Visiting the farms, that, that was also critical. And just looking at the animals at their level. This is the third time or probably the fourth time that I've been on. And you know I've always stressed that a formulation is never complete until the animal tells you it's complete. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that is something that I see a lot of farmers doing now. They're paying attention to their animals more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they used to mm -hmm. the or used to just you know tie them leave them in the bush and that's it but now we're, we're evolving finally we're evolving. yay <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> the, the sector has certainly evolved and i'm i'm extremely proud to I'm... be part of that journey mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. I, I hope that i i continue along this journey 
you know, and just the exchange of information. I, I, I pray that I'm part of that process. So your new venture is called Farm and Animal Nutrition Solutions, right? That and is, I, I like the acronym, FAM. Yes, <laughs> so tell us about FAM. Yeah, well, <laughs> agriculture, that is correct. So uh -huh. um, one of the reasons why I came up with it is I am a nutritionist, yes, but uh -huh. first and foremost, I'm an agriculturalist, I'm an animal scientist. Uh -huh. And I am a professional problem solver. That's <laughs> well, we need more people like that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I just have a, a natural curiosity. Ever since I was uh -huh. a, a child, I would take apart televisions and, and radios and try to figure out what makes them tick and how mm -hmm. can I put them back together and how can I improve upon it. And thankfully, my mother, who is also a science teacher, mm -hmm. That therefore, scientists. She encouraged that natural curiosity in me. That's good. That's good. And that natural curiosity has now gone on to forming this company. And one of the, you know, our tagline is agriculture done right. And the reason why it's agriculture done right is because we take the time to research mm -hmm. and make sure it's practical and appropriate before we go out there public okay and i think okay. that, that is something that is is lacking here in jamaica i love jamaica and i'm appreciative of all of the work that the research and development division has done but unfortunately because of budgetary constraints it has not done as much to advance the mm -hmm. as it did in the past mm -hmm. but the yeah. days of tp lecky when he sat down in the pasture looking observing Mm -hmm. animals and then deciding that a uh, uh, bus indicus and a zebu cross was what we needed here in yeah. Jamaica, you know, developing four cattle. You know, my father actually, um, when he was in 4-H, he, he was like under TP Licky or something of the sort. So he's been around a yeah. long time because yeah. my father's not young. <laughs> wow. Right. So, mm -hmm. so one of the things that he imparted was just observation and improving, continuous mm -hmm. improvement. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we've kind of stalled because it does take money, unfortunately, to do quality research work. Mm -hmm. And it takes money to distill this information, synthesize the information so that the average farmer can understand it. Absolutely. Right. And then, of course, you know, private sector plays a role in this also. So. Mm -hmm rather than viewing research and dissemination and education as the permit strictly of the government, I think we as farmers and private sector need to also take that on and say, we too have a role to play Absolutely. in national development food security. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's where I would, I see myself and my company mm -hmm. being in a unique position to combine that. I understand all aspects of the industry. I even know the policy and the history. Okay. My history buffs, I understand the history behind certain certain actions that, that have been taken, right? So, so let me ask you this. What services does fans provide? Because I'm so not even clear. I'm like, I know she's out there doing something. I'm excited, but what exactly is she doing? Right, so... Well, <laughs> First and foremost, the, the first service that we provide is actually fodder. Okay. High quality fodder. Hay, mm -hmm. silage, green chop. Um, we also provide consultation services, so mm -hmm. nutrition management. We provide analysis, so feed analysis mm -hmm. services. So if okay. it is that you need us to come on your, your property, take, for example, send them off. Mm -hmm. For analysis, helping you to interpret the data, we we offer that services also, okay. and then we, as our name suggests, we're solution based. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I saw out there, and I, I I know I was talking to you and some other farmers, somebody from Dairy Board and one of the reps um, out there that you have some farmers that have one two dairy milking goats, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Milking goats, cattle. And they're hand milking. 
this is very hard on them. So one of the things I did was searched out there and I, I came across the utterly easy. And I think, in fact, it was one of the, the I go chats that I did with you that I came across this utterly easy help milk. And I, I was like, oh man, that is so cool. And I'm a gearhead. I'm a total gearhead. Uh -huh. So as soon as I saw the hand milk and I saw that there was a battery operated option, I said, you know what? This is innovative technology. It's mm -hmm. relatively inexpensive. Mm -hmm. It's what I call appropriate technology. And I contacted yeah. the company immediately and said, hey, how can I become a distributor here in Jamaica? So, so that's one of the solutions that we offer. Oh, you're a distributor for Utterly Easy? Yes. I'm, I'm I didn't realize that. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. I know Natty uses it and a couple other people online, I know they use it. Um, but yeah, it's been great. It's awesome. Especially if you have that one-off mother that, you know, you, you just need to get some milk out of her pretty quickly. It's actually yeah. very nice. It's very right. good. It's, it's, it's excellent for when you want to gather colostrum and mm -hmm. store it. Absolutely. Or, you can never tell when a mother is unable to produce colostrum. We do that all the time. Yeah. You, you know, that that first first milk is important because Absolutely. one of the last things that you actually need is is um, failure of passive immunity transfer. Mm -hmm. So you know you have what's called the floppy kid syndrome once okay. that that happens. Yes, so that's where the utterly easy came, comes in, and then the electric milker actually allows you to milk up to eight animals at once. Okay, so, and nice. the, the thing is the price that. You know, sometimes as Jamaicans, you have the tendency to say, okay, I'm going to go online and order it myself from the mm -hmm. overseas supplier. The price, once it lands here, is the same price that I sell it here in Jamaica. Yeah. So there's actually no real cost savings for you. That's true. I checked check the hand milk on Amazon and yours is cheaper. <laughs> I, I don't want to be here yet. I'm like, hey. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to be here yet. All right. Exactly. So, Okay, so since you're a gearhead, I broke one of the hand milkers. So hopefully oh, yeah. I can send it back to you. That's why I'm going to buy a second one. So right. I'm going to send it back to you so you can fix it. And watch. I can try and fix it. Definitely. I can definitely try and fix it for you. All right. We actually have two questions in here. Will you be offering, let me put it up here. Show. Will you be offering your services to farmers? Example, if a farmer wanted you to create a feeding program for them, etc. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. All right. So and then the advantage, the advantage of if I offer that service to you uh, is it's not affiliated with anything. It's an independent opinion of what you should be doing on your phone. Okay. My opinion. Okay. All right. So, so that's that's the advantage. I, I, I don't have anything to say. Okay. You just go in and objectively, objectively look. provide you with feedback. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Um, here's another question, which I think we might get to later, but we'll go ahead and throw it out there. How would you advise a farmer who have bought a pellet machine to create an all round pellet? Do you think it's worthwhile or is it better to buy the company produced pellets instead? Ooh. It, it actually depends on what kind of pellets that you're trying to produce. So one of the things that I had envisioned while I was at Bodo's research station and I had contacted um, Stephen Henriquez was to bring down a pellet machine to make your own high quality forage press. So if you use things like Tricantira, Mulberry, uh, a little Moringa, mixed with some of the minerals that you buy from the farm store, you can mm. make it a high quality pellet yourself. Okay. So, but I'm not advocating replacing the concentrate. Concentrate does have a place in your feeding program. This is simply to augment. Okay. But remember, the, the concentrate is called a supplement, and it depends on the lifestyle of the animals. So young kid, yes, you focus on concentrate from the store because they're pre-ruminant, and you want to develop the rumen the villi as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But once you have animals that are strictly maintenance, they should be going out to pass when you can make your own high quality. Let me go ahead and do it. Yes, absolutely. Here's another question. Go ahead and throw that out there. Are grass pellets useful or is it best for the goats to chew the grass in its normal form? I would recommend doing it in a normal form because you have the fiber length. Uh -huh. 
you know, it stays in the room and you want it to stay as long as possible in the room and then, you know, the regurgitation, the chewing, the production of the sodium bicarbonate with the saliva acting as a buffer. So I, I would say it's better for you to have them either go grazing, you feed silage, or to, yeah. rather than doing the, the, the grass in a pellet. Yeah, let's work with in nature. The, <laughs> right. In fact, I would I would leave for the high quality protein. Uh huh. Bridges. Yeah. And how about shaft grass? It's shaft closer grass, to. Yeah. So, so the, the the advantage of the shafted grass is one. Less wasted. Less. Yeah. Less, less waste. Is uh -huh. pasture management, parasite management, and it cuts it to the way. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. That's good. All right. So, our topic then is sustainable feed development or feed management, either or, okay? We could go either way with that. So in light of that, how do you see, well, first of all, before you even go there, what do you call, what, when you talk about sustainable feed management, what are you referring to? When I'm, sustainable feed management encompasses stewardship of the environment uh -huh. stewardship of your pocket <laughs> <laughs> even better <laughs> right. yeah. uh -huh. and, and maintenance of the animal's health so so that's where that's what i call sustainable feed management so it, it doesn't mean relying strictly on concentrate it doesn't mean <clears throat> slash and burning a uh, forested area to to grow only grass you know considering mm -hmm. that goats are browsers you know something like a civil pastoral system would would be the the best option and it's mm -hmm. more sustainable especially for soil health thermal regulation standpoint so that's what i think sustainable feed management should be it's it's mm -hmm. It's a series of management practices that you put in place to ensure the long-term okay. development of your herd. Okay. Right? All right. It, it, it means it means for the conservation also. And this is critical. I know Jamaicans like to focus more on hay production, but what about the rainy periods? You know, you're talking about silage production mm -hmm. or even haylage. Mm -hmm. that's that's what is is critical one of the things that struck me when i visited new zealand you see all of these sheep farms and on a 50 acre farm you have at least five to ten acres devoted to a standing feed conservation yeah and right. that's very rare you very rarely see that in jamaica you don't, you don't really see that in jamaica mm -hmm. so that's what that's what my my definition of sustainable feed management is okay right? it also means that you're taking into consideration your environment so <clears throat> for example volunteer grasses if volunteer grasses do well on your pasture rather than introducing a improved grass variety work with mm -hmm. what you have mm -hmm. with fertilization soil yeah. health Try yeah. to to maintain the earthworm population. Try yeah. to I, I remember, yeah, I remember when we started here. Everybody was like, "Take out all of this grass and put in all of this stuff," and we're like, "Okay." And we, um, we're glad we didn't listen because right. now the volunteer volunteer grass is there. We don't have to replant it. It's it comes in naturally. There's no issues. As well, it had like, I want to say 19% crew protein 19 after we got it tested. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, this is awesome. Right. Stick because to what, mm -hmm. yeah, so one of the things you have to you have to understand is the genetic selection that has happened over the years to ensure that the grass that you have right in front of you mm -hmm. is ideally suited for your environment. And some of the and, and that's the reason why I'm doing some research work because you have to investigate under what conditions are the improved grass varieties best suited for. You know, okay. mm -hmm. we're, we're relying mostly on data that's coming from Brazil, from Costa Rica, Colombia, mm -hmm. and very, very little data is being collected and disseminated for 
the Jamaican environment. I'm not saying that the improved grass varieties aren't great because right now I've planted some sorghum sedan grass and the yield per hectare is, is phenomenal. But awesome. I was also in an area that did not have much volunteer grass. So you, you have know, to yeah. pick. I'm like, which one do I like? Let me work with this. Nice. Exactly. <laughs> right. kind of nice. Make sure that it's, it's all about efficiency. You make sure mm -hmm. that the soil conditions are ideal so that you get a very high nutrient value. Where is your farm? Bernard Lodge. Okay. Okay. Not that I know where that is, but <laughs> where's that close to? It's St. Catherine. It's Saint Catherine. Um, okay. right, between, right between Spanish Stone and Portmore. Okay, very good. Now I have a better idea. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So when you talk about environment, what are some of the things that we can do to work better with the environment? Right. So, you know, it's so funny, you know, right now we are in 2023, we are in what's called a climate departure situation mm -hmm. and what does what that means is that the lowest temperature this year is going to be higher than the highest temperature of last year okay okay oh okay right so if you notice we're in may and we're already seeing highs of 33 degrees celsius mm -hmm. you don't typically see 33 degrees celsius in may you would see it in july june august right okay Mm -hmm. So already mm -hmm. the the coolest day mm -hmm. in 2023 is hotter than the hottest day in 2022. So it's a climate wow. departure. What does that mean? So you mean we're going to get hotter? Yes, we are going to get hotter. <laughs> okay. And, okay, and go ahead. The May rains have not come, right? So, of course, that's where your, your forage conservation would have come in. So what does that mean in terms of feed management? All right. So one of the things I, I heard Ray talk about last last I go chat or it was his review of, of the small room net association meeting. Okay. Oh two two, right. two so, Saturdays ago. But anyway, two, go ahead. Right. Uh -huh. right. Two Saturdays right. ago. Mm -hmm. Our farmers are very savvy. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, you know the existing feeding techniques. But one of the things that we need to brush up on now is how do we combat heat stress? and what's going to be even longer periods of heat stress in the near future to come. Mm -hmm. And one of the things <clears throat> that we, we have to look at is high quality forage and water are essential. So what I mean by high quality forage, so rather than allowing the grass to lignify because you're trying to get biomass, you're actually going to feed it when it's 19% in your case. Mm -hmm. protein, it's, it's easily digestible, right? And the reason why you're going to feed the grass is a little bit younger, but you know you have to be careful for nitrogen. You don't have nitrogen poisoning. But one of the reasons why you're feeding the grass a little bit younger, you don't want you don't want it to lignify, is the more the rumen has to work, it's the more body heat that's being produced, metabolic heat that's being produced. Mm -hmm. So you're actually compounding the heat stress situation, right? Um, normally, I would say feed a lot of fiber in non-heat stress situations but in a heat stress situation you actually want to do the opposite you want to reduce the amount of fiber that you're introducing to the room in right because you want to push more propionate production and less acetate production so that okay that's that's the deal remember that we're we're, we're down here keep, yeah, yeah. Keep, so, keep, keep it simple keep it simple <laughs> So, because I do have a question, what does that mean to non to non learned people? So keep it simple, keep it simple for all of us down here. So, so all right. So the goat, the goat has several sources of energy and protein, mm -hmm. right? The energy isn't from whatever you're feeding them per se. So even though you know you might see gross energy of the grass, that type of thing. It's not really from that. Mm -hmm. The rumen, just think of it as this, this beautiful fermentation vat. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Full of bacteria, full of fungi, full of protozoa. And they're all working together and they're in an equilibrium, right? So when you're feeding more fiber, you're actually promoting the bacteria that produces as they're 
byproduct, acetate. Okay. So you, you heard about acetic acid vinegar? Mm -hmm. that's, okay. That's okay. When you're feeding more concentrate, you're promoting the bacteria that would give you propranic acid and butyric acid. Now, acetate, butyric acid, propranic acid, they all help to provide energy. Okay. To the animals. By the way, we use it too for energies. You know, mm -hmm. your, your large intestine. So, you know, your um, the appendix that people say you don't really need. The <laughs> appendix actually produces a lot of butyric, acetic, and propranic acid. So we, we humans also have the ability to use it in a limited amount. Mm -hmm. But for the ruminants, they're dependent on this. Okay. Right? Energy source. But they get more energy from propionate, from butyric acid. And than from the acetate, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing for protein production. So the protein that you give to the rumen, if it's not protected somehow, it gets broken down by the, the, the microbes and the microbes in turn now produces their own protein and that is what is digested by the animal. And that's the reason why I always said, you know, this debate about, you know, how high of a crude protein, it, it doesn't really matter because mm -hmm. the important thing is actually whether or not the protein is protected, yes or no, because mm -hmm. if it's not protected, no matter how high it is, that protein is not going to be available to the animal. It's actually the bacterial protein that's going to be available to the animal. Okay. You had mentioned young grass. How young is young? Let's put in weeks. Sorry, one thing. But it, depends, it, depends on, it depends on the variety. So African star, we're talking... 18 to 21 days, same thing for Pangola. 18 to 21 days, okay, that's not weeks, that's days, okay. Yeah, well, days is a couple weeks, but when you think it in days, you think it this goes a lot quicker. So a good three to four weeks. Yeah, a good three to four weeks. Okay. Um, uh -huh. so it, it really it really depends on the type of grass. So it's it's important when you look at the, the maturity stage. Dairy Board did a presentation of it and I think um, Khalil and Dean Avril also did some presentations where they showed some research work that I believe originated out of Bodo's. That's, this was after my time, where they did different harvesting intervals and they looked at the crude protein levels and the biomass levels, and then they had some recommendations. So if somebody, I, I can look for it and, and provide it to the group. Okay. But, so it depends on the variety of grass. So it is important for you to know what is in your pasture mm -hmm. and manage accordingly. So that's where the sustainability comes in. And that's one of the tests you can do for us, right? Is tell us what's in our pasture. Okay, yeah, I'm just, yeah, just making exactly. sure we tie it all back in. <laughs> another thing that farmers can do to mitigate the effects of heat stress is feeding early in the morning and late in the afternoon. So rather than midday, where remember I spoke about that metabolic the, the, mm -hmm. the metabolic heat mm -hmm. that's produced from digestion of the feed, you have it earlier in the, the morning or later on in the afternoon when they're cooled down. And this ensures that they're actually eating according to their full requirements. Think about yourself. I don't know about you, you know, but in the summer. Midday, the last thing I want is to have a heavy meal. I probably would eat a sandwich and drink some water. That's it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I I would rather wait until right about now, seven, six o'clock to, uh -huh. to eat a heavier meal. Uh -huh. Right? So it's uh -huh. the same, whatever principle, if you think, I always view nutrition, looking at it from my body uh -huh. and then applying the same principle to the animals because we're all biological beings we're all animals uh -huh. so and and that's one of the ways in which you can really um be attuned to the needs of your animals mm -hmm. so in this case feed early in the morning late in the afternoon what's early in the morning though because don't we have to worry about the dew and worms and all that but i guess uh -huh, it's not as much that's to worry where... about now <laughs> yeah. no 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 what so, time's early so you're talking about six o'clock, but I, I remember Dr. Young, she was talking about the dew on the grass and that is how you introduce that nasal box, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm talking about if your animals are pinned, you've cut the feed and you've given it to them. Oh, okay. That's what, okay. I'm thinking about, because mine go to pasture, so that's what I'm thinking about. 
no no so so i would recommend in in your situation since you let them out to go to pasture you allow them to go to pasture a little, little bit later on in the afternoon or if they do go to pasture ensure that the pasture has shade so that's okay. one of the things that that astounds me sometimes when i see people establishing pastures there's no there's no cover mm -hmm. where's the cover you've cut down every single tree and this is where don't, don't get me started cutting down trees oh my god they don't think it's like what's gonna happen down the road don't cut the tree down, <laughs> the tree down. exactly and, that, and that's the reason why i'm such a big fan of civil pastoral system and in fact i think on your i chat one of on your your Facebook group, one of your farmers actually showed the difference with grass growing underneath shaded area versus mm -hmm. yeah, and it, it actually it actually deals with um, it was related to actually nitrogen depletion of the soil. Okay, so yeah. why the grasses were were greener under the shade areas? You know, you still had a lot of humic acid mm -hmm. and nitrogen fixation happening there because of the earthworms and the moisture and that type of thing right but if it is that you must feed them during the day you should mm -hmm. give them smaller more frequent meals right okay okay and then adding electrolytes to the water as much as possible so like the heat your, your heat stress packs that have high vitamin c levels mm -hmm. i know that there are some packs out there they're a little bit more expensive that would have vitamin e you have to be very careful with that not that it is detrimental to the animal it's just that vitamin e is a, a fat soluble vitamin so you have to watch your water lines to make sure that it's cleaned out properly when when you're using a supplement like that okay live yeast is is very good live yeast live yeast yes okay how would you administer that or how would you give them that you you can actually top dress it on the grain on the grass on the grain on the grass, okay you okay. can top dress it um selmanax is actually not a live yeast but it does help it does does have some of the components that would help with mm -hmm. stress right okay. you you have other prebiotics out there okay and molasses somebody asked how about molasses does that help too with heat stress molasses it has a lot of electrolytes in it. You just okay. have to be very careful. It's very high in potassium. Mm -hmm. If you eat too much of it, you might induce uh, electrolyte imbalance. Maybe okay. Diarrhea. So you have to be very careful with with the molasses. But mm -hmm. yes, it's it's an it's a good source of electrolytes once it's managed properly, right? So where would we find that live yeast? Is is that the, the Hypro Superstore? Is it something you bring it in or you provide? I don't no the right, now, right now i don't supply a live yeast oh thank you very much for that idea <laughs> is anybody providing it here i've never even heard anybody talk about it to be honest so baker's yeast can actually be used oh, okay yeah okay regular yeast that i use to make bread i can use it <laughs> yeah it, it, it's it's not the ideal um ideal one but yes it can it can be used mm -hmm. in a pinch Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. What about stress mix, nutrients, nutrients? All yes. of those help. Yes, all of those help. You have to be careful, however, with the if you have sheep, you know, the copper content mm -hmm. of them. Um, one of the things you also have to be careful of is I I'm, I'm not a big proponent of some of them that say they have amino acids i think it's it's something that is not necessary for the ruminants because unless it's rumen protected it's just going to be converted by the rumen but um microbe so it, it's an unnecessary expense so i would stick to the stress mixes that mm -hmm. have mostly electrolytes in it bethane from okay. bethane which is from sugar beets mm -hmm. it's very good Okay. Excellent right. osmo regulator. All right. So, how have you seen the the sector? I'm sorry, evolved since you've been in it to where we are now. You know, I I was looking on on Instagram and I see all of these farmers bragging about their feeding trough and <sighs> the shade that they've provided, and I I was just smiling. I was so proud. 
Um, mm -hmm. Even when Ray told two weeks ago, he was talking about the farmers knowing about parasite management and um, feed for March and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. When I came back to Jamaica, we still had the concept of you feed anything to goats, right? You didn't really pay attention to the quality. Mm -hmm. I've seen that evolved over the years. It's no small part to the work done by Bodles, by RADA, mm -hmm. Dairy Board, the FAO through the various projects that they've implemented, um, people who have an absolute love for it, like Dr. Young. I remember when I met her, she broke her, she broke her leg and she mm -hmm. was part of this, this, the initial FAO project that, that spoke to, to artificial insemination. And you used to have farmers that would give her scrub females. So you had this good, good semen for artificial insemination and they would give her scrub females, right? But no, that's changed. You're giving your awesome. best females. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So in the space of 15 years, there's a level of sophistication that I would say is due no small part to this I go chat. Because oh, just, thank you. I'm thank telling you. you this, <laughs> we try. <laughs> the fact that farmers are willing to log on 7 p.m. every Saturday, Saturday night. I know. I, it blows my mind every time I'm like, wait, these people are not through. <laughs> But that shows the thirst for knowledge. That's true. Facebook page where they're, they're exchanging ideas. Yes, and I love it. Open to, there's open discussion. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the sector can only go up from here. Absolutely. Now, one of the things, though, that I, I would love to see, um, especially we still have a way to go. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. These imported animals. Um, one of the things that I would love to see is we've imported these animals, superior genetics, but they also have very high feed requirements. And we've we've not advanced the sector enough, in my opinion, to really mm -hmm. meet the the total demands of, of these animals, these lovely high milk producing high milk producing animals right so that's where i would love to see us advance we're mm -hmm. still not looking seriously at pasture as a crop we need to you know, we need to look at that you know mm -hmm. you just i i passed fields and i see some of the grasses having their the seed heads on them you know that means that they've passed maturity mm -hmm. uh, their nutritive value is very low. So I would love to see us move to that way, to, to, to that direction. It also, um, one of the areas I, I really see that we need to improve upon is sometimes we get a little bit of information and all of a sudden we're experts and you can't tell me anything anymore. I am always learning. Mm -hmm. I'm a lifelong learner. That's where you started. That you can never learn every, know everything, no matter how old you are. Yes. Exactly. You can mm -hmm. never know everything. And I, I I, just pray that more people approach the sector that way. And even though you say, yes, I know knowing the information and actually implementing the information are two different things. Two different things. Right. And then everybody loves talking. Uh, but yeah. when it comes down to the work, exactly. very few do it. Right. <laughs> So mm -hmm. that's that's where I would love to see the sector move towards. I would love to see the sector move more towards forming sustainable cooperatives mm -hmm. and this um, bad mine is, as you'd call it in Jamaica, you mm -hmm. know, the bad mine is real, you know. It's um, very real, very real. Everybody have their own race to, mm -hmm. to, to run, you know. Yes. You can't compare yourself with somebody you else. Compare, mm -mm. right? And mm -mm. we're not all in the same boat. We're on the same river or in the same ocean, but we're all in different boats. That's and true. It's, it's it's fine. You don't need to look at somebody else. Mm -hmm. But I would love for us to develop sustainable cooperative and this 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 era of free exchange of information to move the sector forward. Because I always say that the competition 
isn't here in Jamaica. The competition is overseas. That's true. All of us have a role to play in maintaining our food sovereignty, mm -hmm. sustainability. Mm -hmm. The last thing that we need, you know, when when the big the big boys take out their big guns and they're fighting with each other, we've seen what happens That's here. True. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if if there was an air of cooperation among everyone, There's so much better. We would have been we would have been able to weather the storm a little bit better, and and mm -hmm. that's that's where I'm I'm an optimist. Um, you know, you can call me naive, but I think that the sector can improve. I think if you have more more people that enter it with the heart of a servant leader, mm -hmm. it it would certainly move forward. Yeah. And I, I think, like you said, we've, we've made good strides and I think it's just going to get better and better and better. So I think, um, yeah, we'll just, it, it, it will get better. It will get better. So kudos to those of us that are trying. And, you know, like I said, the family here is really good. And like you, you just talked about Dr. Young, she jumped in. Um, she's always very helpful sharing information. And that's how everybody learn is like, you have to share what you know. You can't hide your knowledge under a bushel because that doesn't help. That anybody. is right. That is right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, so, and then one of the things too, that I want to see is a proper genetic program. So with these purebred animals, you know, they're, they're not, a, they're not really adapted to the Jamaican situation as yet. Mm -hmm. How can we come up with a sustainable genetic improvement program? Mm -hmm how can we 10 years down the line instead of importing from overseas be exporting to small islands and showing them this is the blueprint this is the ideal animal for a tropical environment you know i i went to barbados the other day and i saw the barbados black belly and i'm a big fan of the barbados black belly and the st croix because <clears throat> they're regional regional grown animals unfortunately mm -hmm the population is just a little bit too low to be sustainable. Mm. But I would love Jamaica to be a net exporter of superior genetics. Yeah. And that can only happen through proper nutrition. Proper nutrition. All right. So going back to some, <laughs> yeah. So going back to the, the, the topic when we talk about um, sustainable, sustainable feed management. Right. Yeah. What are some critical components that we all need to start putting in place? You need to catalog what you have, collecting data as to what you have. If you don't- You're talking about you, feed, you mean as far as what we're feeding? What okay. We're feeding. Right. Exactly, right. so you have to catalog what you, what you have. You, you can't rely on the book values. You can't make assumptions as to, as to what your father is providing. So once you catalog, you know what you have, how can mm -hmm. you improve upon it, right? Um, Soil fertility is also important. I spoke about that earlier because if you're treating, just like how the agronomists, they're, they're treating soil fertility as the most important aspect of plant production. It's the same. It's the most important aspect of fodder production. A healthy plant is less susceptible to infestation from worms, Mm -hmm. from larvae, moths, that type of thing, right? Um, they're not as stressed. And I'm, I'm guilty of that because right now, you know, a section of my field actually got water stressed. So I know that I can't feed that because of the high prussic acid that contains and, and nitrates that would contain in the sorghum sedan grass. So you're sticking to a schedule, consistent, consistently looking at your field, you know, walking, um, ensuring that once the animals come out of the pasture, going through and mowing that pasture, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. critical. Yeah. And when you're mowing the pasture, you have to look at the sharpness of the blade. I know some of us are tempted to use a whipper, but I would prefer if you use a blade because when you cut mm. the grass, you know, you have to look at, with a whipper, sometimes you see what looks like a, a, a broom top. I call it a broom top. Mm -hmm. the, the, the shaft of the leaves are so shattered that the, the grass becomes traumatized and all of its resources mm. now is diverted towards 
recovering from that stress, healing the areas that were damaged rather than new growth. So sometimes, you know, when you look on a stand of king grass or yuba cane or the mulatto too, or even the, the Mombasa, and you say, oh, you know, the first crop was excellent, but mm -hmm. after you cut it, the plant's not really recovering mm -hmm. the way that you thought it would. But mm -hmm. you have to look at how did you cut it? Because if you're damaging the leaf and the leaf stems, the, 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 the grass is under stress and it will not grow back to the vigor that it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the sustainability and um, sustainable management that we, we spoke about. We, right. use, we use cherry and oh baby, our cows. Your cows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go through, and if you if you could go through with some sheep, that that would be even better. That would be awesome. And we wanted yeah. even chickens to come behind too, but we haven't gotten yeah, there yet. Yeah, so yeah. we had this whole thing planned. <laughs> you know, when, when we talk about grazing management, you know, we always say goats go first, then mm -hmm. the cows, then the sheep. And, okay. And uh, you know, you just do a rotational grazing. Mm -hmm. that, yes. That, and that's what we that's what we want to do. So, Mister Mister McCook is asking, what about cutlass? Was is that does yeah. that than the whipper? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. It's just that boy. It's that it's bending over. Yeah, man, it's, it's very hard on you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I saw this. I saw. Um, well, of course, you know you have those blade attachments mm -hmm. to the whipper. So instead of using the string, you use a blade attachment instead. Yeah, yeah. And then I saw this neat little contraption where somebody had put a shield. Let me see. Like, okay, so this is a whipper and the blade, and they had mm -hmm. put a shield to the side. So they did a um, semi, like an, what, what would you call it? A sweeping motion. when they Okay. Were, right. And then that just allowed all of the grass to fall to one side. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like like the shield that they have on mowers that let things fall to one side, a similar thing? Like on lawnmowers? Yeah, some, some no, lawnmowers have. No, this it was, was a little bit different. Metal shield. This was actually a metal shield to the side. Okay. Um, that person developed themselves and it just. Nice. It was once it cut the yeah. grass, it just carried it over to the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we are looking at the BRC tractor and it has lots of different yes, attachments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and the nice thing about that is that you can attach the seat mm -hmm. back and um you have the sycamore attachment okay. for it, right? Okay. So, so with the sycamore or any attachment, of course, you just have to make sure that it's very sharp. Absolutely. You damage you don't want to damage the grass. Yes. Okay, that's that's good. I didn't even know you could damage grass. I'm like grass is grass, but I didn't know you could damage grass like that. See, you're never too old to learn. All right. Uh, any other critical components we need to think about? Yeah. So, um, something as simple as the mineral supplements that you're providing to the animals. Okay. I I think rather than strictly the salt lick if you can have some micronutrients in that. And some of the micronutrients contain it, like selenium, which is an excellent antioxidant, mm -hmm. helps with heat stress. That's that's something that you should definitely look at. Okay. Right? And the cobalt, anything that would boost immunity, that's something that, that you should look at. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of proud of the free choice mineral that Hyper had, okay. simply Ooh. because I, I had helped formulate it and refine it for um it was always there but i kind of improved Fine -tuned it, it. <laughs> well, yes <laughs> all right um somebody's asking does it matter which salt lick is used the yeah, white so one what, the brown one the big so red ones you have to that's why you have to look at the the label to see if it has the micronutrients in it so you have some that's just strictly cobalt, some that's strictly iron, and then you have some that have micronutrients. And then even something as simple as, uh, to this day, I mean, it, it really pains me that it never really took off. Maybe I should, you know what? I'm going to go into the, the manufacturing of urea molasses. Okay. Because okay. It, it, one of the things I discovered when, when I was at Bodo's doing the research work was, Boy, the animals loved it, and it really helped with mm. weight gain when 
compared to animals that were fed concentrate and grass alone. You know, the urea salt block. Really? Yeah, it reduced your cost of production. So nice. Um, when you're starting, we'll, we'll do the test farm for you. No problem. No we'll problem. volunteer to do the test, but we'll be the guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> the, the information, all of the information that I'm given, it's out there. It's a matter of implementing it. And very true. And one of the things we have to add, we have to realize too is we can't all do every single thing. Somebody yeah. has to specialize. Mm -hmm. So that's where fans comes in. Mm -hmm. I am not going to grow goats, but I'll grow the forages that you need to feed your goats. That's what right. I will specialize in, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. and, and that is something that I know that you guys have been talking about, you know, when you talk about approaching the goat business, you specialize in, in milk production, that type of thing. We can't mm -hmm. do a single thing all at once. We yeah. can't everywhere all at once and that's the reason why you, you gotta have select spirit of cooperation and you need to have specialization mm -hmm. and support each other absolutely absolutely so how does fans slash dr denny hope to contribute to us as farmers what what can we what can we reach out to you for as far as assistance and support yeah that's a good thing just assistance and support that person can pick up the phone and call and say xyz so yeah what what can you help us with you, know, you heard me i said i'm a professional problem solver if you just okay years off me I, I have no problem giving a, a listening ear and and mm -hmm. uh, providing some troubleshooting you know you could very well come up with a solution on your own, but you just mm -hmm. need somebody to listen and say, hey, does this make sense? Yes or no. Um, mm -hmm. So that's where I'll come in. My farm, I intend to make it a demonstration farm. Okay. Pretty much like what you do with, mm -hmm. you know, you invite farmers to come up and mm -hmm. look at your operations. So it's the same thing for me. I, I want farmers to, to look and see what the best practices are. Of course, we I'm have, working on the best practices. We had 30 K students this past Tuesday. 30K right. students and, and for teachers and professors, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's 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 where fans is going to come in and we're a solution based. So if we're out we're out there in a the sector, just like with the hand milker, I saw a need and I'm feeling the need. I want to see what are the issues out there and how can I help you address them using appropriate technology. That you know, I don't want to see something in the mm -hmm. United States, Canada, Colombia, and say, hey, that's perfect for here. I have to make sure that it's appropriate for Jamaica, do my due diligence, and then help disseminate the information to, to my fellow farmers. OK, so here's one solution you can give us. I'd love to know about sargon, please. Can I add it to feed sargassum. and sargassum? Sargassum. Oh, I'm sorry. So I can't read. <laughs> can I add it to feed and salad? <laughs> All right, so sargassum, it's, it has some prebiotic properties. First of all, what is sargassum? Sargassum, is that seaweed? That's okay. washing up on... on is, that the, is that the official um, That's the name. scientific name? Okay. Yes, yes. Gigi, right. you could have just said seaweed, you know, because we never know what sargassum was. <laughs> you, have okay. you actually have different types of seaweed. So you have, okay. green, you have green algae, you have um, brown algae, that type of thing. So sargassum... Mm -hmm. It can be used, but everything in moderation. Um, it's a very good prebiotic, but it does have some heavy metals that you have to be very careful of. I would love to see more data on it, nutrient profile data, not just the, the um, protein, the digestibility. I want the metal or the... the um, Metal is the correct word, but mm, the inorganic minerals, right? So the inorganic minerals, I would love to see the inorganic mineral profile on it. So the things that we're worried about is arsenic, um, dioxin, that type of thing. So we have to be very careful, but yes, in limited quantities, why not do your own little experiment? Um, as it pertains to silage, I probably wouldn't, added to the silage because it's going to change the microbial population and instead of 
fermenting, you might actually have spoilage. So I would hold off on doing it on silage. But with the feed, you know, small incremental increase, observe your animals. That's the most important thing when it comes to introducing anything new. Hmm. I never thought about seaweed. Thank you, Gigi. All right. So what about, what do you think? I think we, oops. I think we did this one already. Didn't we talk about this? What do you think of urea, urea salad? We talked about this a little bit. Maybe Mr. Is it urea or is it urea, Mr. McCook? I think might be a type. Is it? Is this another word that I don't know? <laughs> Let me see. Good old Google. Maybe it's a typo. Gigi <laughs> said, I don't want to kill my goats. Thought it best to ask before I gave them. I'm glad you asked because we would not like for you to kill your goats. <laughs> is it urea silage? Is that what he's asking I about? I think it might be urea. Mr. McCook, are you asking about urea? I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so with urea, it's, it's a very inexpensive okay. method of adding non-protein nitrogen, the, the microbial bacteria would utilize it and then give you um, their product in, well, yeah, microbial protein. So it can be done. You have to be very careful at, about the amount that you're giving. Um, you have some coated urea, so it's slow release. You don't have to worry about urea poisoning when you use a coated urea. Remember, I told you about the, the painful, the painful experience of killing, mm -hmm. killing an animal with mm -hmm. the protein block because I just didn't think about them eating the block so fast. So I learned from that. So you just have to be very careful. You have to make sure that it's dissolved and uniformly distributed because if you have just one section of high urea concentrated in the silage and the animals eat that, you know, you can have some some death on your hands. So. Okay. All right. Here's another question for you. Is there a local facility that can test fodder for nutritive value? So Bodo's research station, I know they're, they're, they were improving their animal nutrition lab. I don't think it's up as yet, but if you need to send off samples overseas, we can, I can certainly help facilitate that request for you. Okay. But I know, and I think both feed companies, well, I know Jamaica Brothers did it, but I'm not sure about Nutramix, but they might also offer analysis but okay. I'm, I'm certainly willing to to provide that service very good very good guys right to us down okay here's another question can we have a beginner's rundown on making silage please <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> i actually made silage this week so there was a farmer that that had two acres of this lovely very tall mombasa grass and he was just going to give it away and i said to him i called him up and said no, let's make some silage. I'll, I'll keep some bags, but then you keep the rest. And he said, well, what's the cost? And I said, no cost. You just pay for the raw material and I'll show you how to do it. So silage is basically a fermentation of the grass, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you're, you're trying to do is you're encouraging the lactobacillus bacteria to produce lactic acid, which lowers the pH and acts as a preservative, right? Okay. And in lowering the pH, you're blocking out harmful bacteria like Clostridium, right? And it's under an anaerobic condition. Now, if the grass that you're cutting has high enough carbohydrates, you don't need to add anything else. You just cut it. Once the moisture is 60%, you'll be good to go, right? But sometimes you need to help the process along. So mm -hmm. that's where you might add an inoculant. And in my case, when I was doing the silage, I used EM1. But you can add an inoculant. You can add molasses, some diluted molasses to try and bring up the moisture and just provide ready carbohydrate to help the proliferation of the naturally occurring lactobacillus in the grass, right? And then once you, you've done that, I used black bags to ensure that you don't really have sunlight penetrating mm -hmm. and vacuum sealed it and, you know, ensured that um, it was a seal tight process. 
And what's, ha what, what's going to happen is the bacterial or the microbial population is going to change over time, over a period of 21 days, right? And you, you find the drum or the bags heating up. And at the end of the 21 days, you have silage that's ready to be given to the animals. Mm -hmm. Of mm -hmm. course, I would prefer if you keep it longer than 21 days because remember, this is rainy day fodder, right? But okay. that's basically what it is. And you so, can get different types of silage that you can get, well, different methods of storing the silage. So you can mm -hmm. have like bunker silo, which mm -hmm. is this big. But hold that thought for a second. Let, let's talk about, let's, let's go back to the very beginning because there may be people that's never done it before. I have a little okay. bit of knowledge about it because we did it with Khalil. And just the basic step-by-step -step process. You go, you cut the grass, you yep. just the yes. basic step-by-step. Okay. Step-by-step. Step. Okay. So you harvest the grass. You, mm -hmm. you cut it up into the sizes that you want it to be about three three inches. Mm -hmm. This is a chaffing machine, yeah, right? Yeah, a chaffing mm -hmm. machine. Yeah, so mm -hmm. use a chaffing machine. And if the moisture is a little bit too high, you want to allow, you allow it, what you call in Jamaica, quail. Or wilt a little so okay. you want to to get rid of the excess moisture uh -huh. and if it is that say you're using something like yubacane which has a very or, or king grass which has a very high carbohydrate content you can actually ensile that by itself uh -huh. but if you're using another type of grass say pangola um i don't know I'm not really familiar with the, the carbohydrate content of, of the Mombasa, but say you're using something that has a lower carbohydrate content. What you're going to do is once it's wilted to the right moisture level, so you, you know, you hold it in your hand and um, whether or not it clumps together or it, it springs apart, that would determine, you know, the moisture level that mm -hmm. whether or not you've reached the right moisture level, you're going to add already activated product inoculant hmm. or you went to add molasses okay we added we did molasses we right. Didn't dilute so it. Can, mm -hmm. right so you, you can add diluted molasses to the mixture so what i used is a spray pan that has never been used for any pesticide or herbicide it's, that's critical because you don't want to kill the the bacteria that's naturally occurring in the grass mm -hmm. so once you spray the molasses on the grass then if you have, say, a 55-gallon drum, you know, you stuff it in the drum, make sure that you compact it. Okay. With so now we're talking about storing it. So now we're right. at the storing because that's really right. critical. Storing. Okay. So right. what are the options for storing it? So the, the options for storing it is 55-gallon drum where you compact yes. it. Mm -hmm. You can use uh, silage bags. And you, you, you can store it right there in the field. So you pile it all together. You use tarp. Cover it, use mm -hmm. tires. You just need to press down as much as possible, get as much of the air out of it. You can use what's called a bunker silo, which is a U-shaped, it's almost, think of a building okay. that doesn't have a front wall, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you drive all of the product in, and again, you use a plastic or tarpaulin, you cover it, put mm -hmm. heavy tires or weight on it, mm -hmm. and... <clears throat> You know, you once the twenty one days have passed, you access it. No, you can also dig it like a hole in the ground and put yeah, it in there too, right? The yeah, you can dig a hole in the ground. No, some of the advantages and disadvantage of each of the storage method is all right. So, I personally prefer the silage bags, and that's mm -hmm. that's the reason why we are manufacturing silage that method for mm -hmm. sale to farmers, mm -hmm. but. Because it's 25 kgs, you cut it off, one feeding, you don't have to worry about spoilage. Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. 25 gallon drum, similar thing, you know, you just open up the drum, feed it out. Mm -hmm. With the bunker silo, once you open the front part of the silage, then you have to use it quickly because you have spoilage that can mm -hmm. occur. So you have all of the fungi, and it starts mm -hmm. having this white fungi growth. And you have to be very careful. Even when you scrape off, you think you scrape off some of the fungi, the micelles or the the tentacles have extended in and it's invisible. So, so you have mm -hmm. to be very careful. 
Same thing with storage in the field. You know, once you open up that silage, you have to feed it quickly. Mm -hmm. So, so going back to the bags, I like the fact that you are vacuum sealing because remember, like that to Denny said, the, the purpose is to take out all that air. We did not vacuum seal. We we're like, oh, we can tie it tight enough. Nope, didn't work. Mm -hmm. It all spoiled. So yeah. you have to the storing of the silage after you've gone through all that work, <laughs> all that yes. time, effort, money, energy. You definitely want to make sure you store it properly because right. it will spoil. <laughs> right, right. So that's that's the reason why we're we're going in the process of vacuum sealing it and mm -hmm. the nutrient value and everything. It's it's been sent off for analysis and it's right there on the bag. So you know exactly what you're getting in each of the bag, the grass species or any other high protein forage that is in that mixture would be right there on the bags. Okay. Very good. Very good. So um, let's see if we have any other questions. I think we've kind of hit most of them as we've gone through. Guys, you have any other questions for Dr. Denny? I, I'm, I'm just kind of scrolling through. We talked about. Oh, one of the things too that, that we're offering as a service is to, to help ahead. you with your, the management of your pastures. And it's actually going to be done. You know, we're going to walk, do assessments, mm -hmm. help with the securing of the perimeter of fencing work. And there is actually an app that's associated with it so okay when, yeah when the pasture was fertilized you know like the different management practices that have been mm -hmm. taken on your behalf is shared to you via an app so we're in discussions with the app developers to make sure that it's appropriate for jamaica so we're in the testing phase of that okay so you know if somebody wants to be a pilot farm that's close to where i am you know <laughs> Nati volunteered for Nati, what would I volunteer for before? I'm volunteering for all this Real stuff and I can't even remember what I'm volunteering for. Okay, so Nati, Nati's all the way in, I think St. Elizabeth, somewhere out the other side. So he yeah. also volunteered for the Euro yeah, Blocks yeah, so, as well. All right, yeah. so just write that down I, I, or contact me, my telephone. So, so yeah, that was going to be my next thing. How do we find fans and right. Dr. And Denny? There's, there's actually a, a website. So we okay, what's your website? And we're, hold on, let me let me bring it up. It's Farm Solutions. So I'm... I'm actually www.farmsolutions. I'm trying to type it in here for them. I hope I typed this right. www.farmsolutions. Am I spelling that right? Looks like it. Yes, farm solutions, J -A. J -A .com? Mm -hmm. All right. And then your phone number. Oh, wait. No, sorry. I just gave you the wrong one. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> All right. Let's do this again. <laughs> <laughs> Farm and animals. You know, I, I I should know my own website. You know, this is kind of embarrassing. That's how you know that it's 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 very new. Yes, that's okay. Farm and animal solutions. No, no, that's not it. That's that's actually somebody else's. I'm making up stuff for her. <laughs> All right. Uh, but the telephone number is three four. Zero. Eight seven six three four zero. Thirty five forty six. Thirty five twenty five. Okay, thirty five twenty five. Doctor Denny. All right. No and website. The website is farmandanimalsolutions dot com. And animal solutions dot com. Hopefully, I can spell this stuff right. Wait, hold on here. Let me type it in. Where are you? She's in virtual, but I'm in Spanish town, but it's Spanish it's town. Yeah. Bernard Lodge. I couldn't think of it just now. I'm Bernard. In, I'm in my car driving up and down. Oh, uh, <laughs> there you go. She's wherever you want her to be. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm driving up and down, supervising my various work crews. Okay, nice. Yeah. Now, do you also provide, it, since you mentioned work crews, do you also provide like help? If Like if a farm has is short of help and they need somebody to come out, you provide that as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Wait, okay Natty's in Mobe. Private chats. Where, how do you do public? You want a, a pub? Oh. No, let, me, let me send it to you. 
and then you okay it to everybody else hold on that song. yes oh there you go i actually put i think i did a good job but i'll copy and paste this just in case okay control copy right so if, if you actually need, if you need some assistance in terms of farm labor yes we can provide that for you yes so that's that's one of the things that we've identified as an area myself and my partner um i mm. didn't ask i didn't ask him if well, one of my partners, I didn't ask them if they, they wanted to, to be bigged up on the chat. So I will not say their name here. But one of the things that um, my partner, I wish it, it was my idea, but it's not my idea. And that's the reason why you must talk to each other. He said that one of the biggest problems out there is finding quality help. You think? <laughs> you know, that's why we've had we've beat that up down up one side and down the other right, <laughs> but anyway right. go ahead <laughs> right so that's that's where he came up with the the solution of training the young people in the right way mm -hmm. of doing it empowering them so they have a sense of ownership in the business mm -hmm. and then now offering their services to to other farmers so, yeah yeah all right. Um, very good. That's that's exciting to know because even if you ha do have good people, every so often, like somebody's sick or vacation, sick, you, right. or you're working on a project, you need somebody to come out and help you. So it's always good to know what sources we can find for additional help. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, any Instagram, Facebook, anything like that? I do have an Instagram page. Yeah, you do. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, what is it? I for, it's I have it here. Yeah, I think you should. Uh, I can don't. You, can you tell? Can you tell that I'm not really? I'm not really. Uh, that then you have to do better. I I know. You know, I'm I'm not that old that I'm not. I'm not supposed to be um, Instagram savvy, but you know, unfortunately, I probably should talk to Khalil about that one. You know. Yes. I, oh, and speaking of Khalil, did you guys know that Khalil took Dr. Denny's position that she just left up? Um, I always say that right. What's it? Jamaica so Broilers? Yeah. So I, I remember Khalil. Khalil used to. I used to um, supervise Khalil at Bordels, and I remember telling him that you need to go get your masters and make sure you study mm -hmm. nutrition. I told him to study room that nutrition. Yeah. And then, as soon as he came back from Israel and, and the government kind of looked as if they were playing around a little, I said, you know, I, I told Hypro, you know, you need to hire Khalil as a nutritionist. Uh-huh. Um I guess I guess he's he's following along he's following your footsteps, yes, yeah. yes. Although we like do him. We and do I'm miss Kelly on not being in the field. Too. Yeah, yeah, and I'm also following his footsteps too, you know, because he's he's a guru on social media and social that's media right. Information. You want help with social media? Go to Kelly. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, we do right. miss Kelly. We're so used to seeing Kelly coming around and his little no, no Kelly. We're like, where's Kelly? Yeah, it's 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 different for all of us, but we're very excited that he's there. Um, so it's it that's awesome. Right, so I just oh. give you my handle for Instagram. Okay, I'm gonna copy this one too. Hold on here, guys. Copy, paste. This is IG. Oops, I put a dot on for you. Hold on, guys. I can't talk and type at the same time. <laughs> All right. So, um. Well, we're getting a lot of big ups here, Dr. D. Thank you for hanging out with me. Good night, gentle yeah. folks. It was really an educational experience. Thank you very much, Sonia. Good to see you. Um, Kavon said it was very informative. Thank you, guys. Um, I had, oh, we had a nice one here. Gigi's Goat Farm. I got to put it up. She says, this is the first time I've seen her live. Totally impressed. Both ladies are awesome. Yay! <laughs> this evening, an electric edition of I go chat. Yay, Dr. Dewey, we did it. <laughs> Actually, you know, that's that's one of the things that I, I really love. I'm I'm probably fifth generation educator. I still I still view myself as a teacher because mm -hmm. my first my associate's degree is actually in agricultural education. Uh -huh. And I just love sharing information 
I just came back from Barbados where, you know, in a room full of 150 farmers, you know, just, just spoke about nutrition and exchanged ideas. And mm -hmm. one of the things that really helped me was I visited the farm first before I formalized that or solidified the presentation. Mm -hmm. And I think that is critical. I've, I've said it earlier and I've, mm -hmm. earlier this evening and I've said it always, you know, when you're providing help, it's easy to just, oh, the book says this, what about whatever. You need to go visit the farm and provide solutions Practical. that are appropriate. Practical, yeah. Are. Same, I, I use that approach when I'm troubleshooting nutrition issues. And in mm -hmm. fact, one of the reasons why I loved to go to farms with veterinarians. Everybody views a problem a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. there's this, this um, picture of people looking at an elephant, blind people looking at an elephant. Mm -hmm. And everybody was touching a different part of the animal. And for some people, it was a tree trunk. Other people, it was a hose. So it, we all have the information and we're all correct. Mm -hmm. But we're correct based on the situation that we faced based on our experiences uh -huh. and the only way we can advance is if we now combine all of the information Absolutely. all our collective knowledge and discuss it and move the sector forward so that's 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 my approach to that's my philosophy in life and that's the approach that fans has okay. all about collaboration appropriate technology basically agriculture done right agriculture done right awesome well dr d i had a great time and i think everybody else did too thank so, you very much for inviting me you know yes. we to the topic and i was like and i said quite oh, truly you know, i don't like to talk about myself you know and i told her you don't want to talk about yourself but me gonna talk about you <laughs> thank you very much for for um taking me out of my shell. Well, you know, I, I very good and sleep nutrition and mm -hmm. if I can help anyone out there, I, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. She has a wealth of information guys. And as you can see, very laid back, very easy to talk to. I would recommend that you call her. And if you have an issue, call her and ask her to come check you out. You need to come back. When, when's the last time you've been here? Hello. Can't May come back. Last year. Me last year. Was it already? Oh my goodness. Yes, and I got okay. very sick afterwards. I had fever and everything. I don't know what. Don't make them think you come here and get sick. It was a coincidence. You no, didn't come here and get sick. No, no, no. It's a coincidence. <laughs> come on. And in fact, yes. actually, you no, know, I was kind of feeling sick from before, but mm -hmm. I had promised you like two months before. That's true. You did like, say that. Word, and I said, you know, I, I, I even dragged my sister up there. Yes, I remember. Yeah, yes. she, she has nothing to do with agriculture. So it was a, a very informative experience for her. So I, I really loved it, you know. Very good. So yeah. when, when, is the, when is the villa going to be ready? Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for my room, right? We're working on it. We're working on it. Don't be surprised. We'll tell everybody when it's ready. <laughs> yes, awesome. So, guys, go and follow Farm. I mean, I said it right. Farm and Animal Nutrition. Oh, yes, Farm Solution. Farm, Farm, Farm Solution. JT. I messed it up. Yeah, Farm Solution <laughs> JA on Instagram. And uh -huh. the website is Farm and Animal Nutrition Solutions.com. Yes. That, okay, and her phone number is somewhere in here too. Also, guys, if you can't remember all of this, just reach out to us and we'll give you that information as well. All right, so awesome night. Thank you guys. Have a great evening. Ray, I think, finally was able to join us in the background. He's busy otherwise. Thank you. All right, I know you guys missed him, but you know, I tried to do what I could. <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining us, and everybody. Thank you very much. You were yeah. an amazing host, and your audience, of course, extremely knowledgeable. They're the best. And they I'm, are the best. I'm, I'm humbled to be in their presence. I, yes. I'm, I'm impressed. Yes. Awesome people. Awesome, awesome. Everybody, have a great night. See you guys same time, same place next week. Love you guys. Bye, fam. Bye. Stay safe.